All right, you guys, um, we're going to get started. So this project is going to be a um, the guest book for people to sign at my mom's uh, funeral service tomorrow. So uh, we didn't have one for my sister. I completely forgot about it. Um, and the pastors asked the other night if we were going to have one. And then I didn't have time to go buy one. Um, and I was like, I'll just make it, you know, whatever. So I've made similar books before, but I had a different binding system. Um, I used to have a bind it all and I got rid of it. So this one, we're going to do two rings. And if these aren't big enough, I will have to look for the bigger ones. Um, but just to go through what we need. So first I design the pages. I'd use word. You could use whatever, you know, word processing thing you have. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I could get two sets, two pages on each eight and a half by 11 sheet. So, um, this was just, you know, maybe 20 minutes of playing around, um, you know, with the name and address. And then I put this at the top. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate our mom's life. I mean, you could just have guest book or, you know, please sign or nothing, whatever. So you want to do this, um, get your file and consider your margins. So I know I want to be, have room to punch um, holes, like larger holes over here, maybe a half inch in. So I made the left-hand margin, I think one and a quarter. Yep, one and a quarter inches on the left. And on the right, I think I just kept it at like a half. Yeah, and I didn't go all the way to the end with the lines. Now, if you notice, like my lines are not, I couldn't get them exactly lined up. It's not the end of the world, you know, we'll get over that. Um, but two in a piece, and it takes just a little bit of practice to get the spacing right. So print out a test copy. Oh, hold on. So I printed this one out on regular paper and then cut it in half. So each sheet is five and a half by eight and a half. And then I tap them together and line them up. And the wording is close enough. You know, it's not going to line up exactly, but that's fine. So I'm not trimming anything off of this. I want the whole page to be five and a half by eight and a half just to make it simple. So I, I wouldn't have to like slice some off of here, slice some off of here, off the top, you know, none of that. I just want to cut it in half and go. So that's really what you need to do first. Um, and you may decide that your book is going to be a different size. That's up to you. So whatever size you're making... Make your pages first, print them out. Um, then I'm going to take these and, and cut them out. So I used basic white cardstock. I did not use the thick. Maybe I should have because I printed these on the laser printer so that they wouldn't smudge. And now it's like curved a little. Um, so I'm going to cut these in half and stack them up. And so let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six times two, 12. And I printed eight sheets. So I have room for 98 signatures. That's going to be more than enough. Um, it may be too many. We'll see. Um, but I'm going to cut these and come back. But let's go through the other pile. Highland Heather. Just regular cardstock. I pulled this out because I may want to, if this curving bothers me too much, I may want to cut this and then cut this in half too and mount it so it gives it a little bit more stability. The problem with that is it will also add extra volume. So that's, we're going to have to see how it goes, all right? Um, but this is just in case. And I would not be making a border. I would just do five and a half by eight and a half, and then five and a half by eight and a half, and glue them together. So it's just, you know, purple on the back. So a couple pieces of that. Um, then you're going to need some designer paper of some kind. I'm planning to use this for the um, inside of the covers, all right? Because we're going to make a front and back cover. Um, out of chipboard and cardstock and then I will want this for the inside maybe some on the outside but I only have three pieces left of this hydrangea paper and hydrangeas were my mom's absolute favorite so I have to use this um, I'm thinking there's a smaller print and then the larger print and then another piece of the purple stripe so I may end up using this for the inside but we'll get to that so you need some kind of designer paper preferably that coordinates with your theme or, or something. Um, we're going to need two pieces of eight and a half by 11. This is to cover our covers. So I'm going to show you how to make the covers and, you know, cover them with cardstock, make it look nice, um, miter the corners, all that. 
but so we need two pieces of that. I'm using gorgeous grape. Then we need two pieces of chipboard. Now, when you cut chipboard, um, this came from designer series paper or like specialty paper. Sometimes Stampin' Up! will pack it in a thicker cardboard and I save them all the time. So sometimes they're smaller. This was obviously 12 by 12. Um, and I'm assuming they are the same width. Yeah, they look it. So I'm going to need to cut this. Um, I'll do that later, but I always recommend keeping a cutter that you have the blade just for chipboard. All right. So you don't want to wreck your other one. When I first started, I made a couple of books, um, little mini scrapbooks, and I cut the chipboard with my guillotine cutter and, oh, I thought I was going to break the handle right off. So this style cutter, I'm going to have to like take a few swipes at it, um, but it'll be fine. So you want to keep that just for chipboard. So I've got my two pieces of chipboard um, and then scratch paper. Let me get rid of that. So, um, and then we've got our three ring binders. Now we are going to need some other things like a stamp set. Um, I'm going to use Hydrangea Haven because uh, it goes, it matches the paper and, you know, my mom loved them. I'm going to stamp the inside. I'm going to stamp these pages with just like a little flower, you know, business um, on every page. So what I'm going to do now is cut these sheets in half. All right, I've got all my pages cut. Um, so far, I am not a fan of the curving. I don't think that it's going to flatten out um, because, by the way, I need this for tomorrow. Um, so I am going to go ahead and mount this with the Highland Heather. Um, and that is going to make it, you know, double thick. I may have to look for thicker rings, but we will see how it goes. Um, so for now, I'm going to stamp... Um, just some quick hydrangea and I don't want to, you know, cover up too much of the, um, the words or anything. Um, but I'm going to speed through this. I'm going to use Highland Heather, um, a little bit. No, I think that's it. Highland Heather and then a light green, maybe, um, maybe pear pizzazz. Yeah. So Highland Heather, pear pizzazz. All right. And I'm going to make, you know, maybe two different styles, but basically all the same. All right, and I'm just going to go through and do these in a stack, and we will speed through all of this, but I will only cut it down so you only have to see so much of the stamping because you just want to get the idea, right? Okay. All right, so I've got all my pages stamped and um, you can see I just did a little bit just so it's not completely plain on each page um, and this is still bowed. So I am now going to go through and glue a half sheet, you know, same size, five and a half by eight and a half onto the back. And the fact that like a little bit is peeking out, I'm not going back and fixing that. It's fine. Um, so I am using the, use any glue you want or tape. Oops. But I'm actually going to use my, this little liquid mono glue, just because this has the most, um, it gives me the most time that if I need to wiggle anything around. Now, I don't want to get this one right to the edge, but I am going all over. And then with these, I like to put them both on the table, both ends, meet them up at the bottom and push up, tap, and press. And then I will press over here and get around the edges. All right, and I will do that for the rest of them. And I'm not worrying about stamping anything on the back of that. It can be plain. I only want them to write on the front anyway, but if anybody wanted to write messages, they could. Now I'm seeing a little bit of this glue, like the lines showing. I'm not a total fan of that, um, but it is what it is. I may switch to my Barely Art. Let's see if that makes a difference because that is a little bit thinner. 
and I haven't used this in a while. So let's see. I may just have to deal with it either way, you know? Man, this is very thin coming out, or very thin line. Okay, but needless to say, I'm gonna glue all these together. There we go. I do need a little bit there in the middle. I just don't trust it not having glue in the middle. All right, let's see how this goes. I just like using my bone folder to smooth all this glue out. All right, that looks pretty good. I don't know if you guys can see the difference, but I can see um, glue lines here and here I can't. So, all right, I will proceed with my Barely Art. All right, so I've got my pile of papers. Um, I ended up having to throw two of the pages away um, and I don't have time to reprint them and do them, so we're just too short because I must have fed the paper in, like it must have been a little crooked so just make sure you pay attention to that. Um, so these will go in the garbage. Of course, that one was after I had mounted it, so I can still save that. Um, but it's still plenty of pages. But now they're mostly straight. They don't have that bow to them. Um, and I like it. And I think, I think we're going to be okay with these rings, even with the covers. Uh, but we'll see. But so now let's talk about the cover. Like what size? Um, so let's start with, this is my page. It is five and a half by eight and a half pages. Um, the plan is that, you know, I'm going to have two holes here. So my chipboard covers, I want everything flush on this side. So for my drawing, I need to add, oops. I want a half inch here, a half inch here, and half inch here. All right, so five and a half plus a half and a half is six and a half. And then eight and a half, the width here, plus just a half, that makes nine. All right, so my chipboard needs to be six and a half by nine. And then let me do, um, I'll write in the, the paper later because um, that'll be even bigger size. But so right now I'm going to cut six and a half by nine. And let me show you with this. So I've got to pull out my scoring blade. That goes back a while. And I'm going to cut at six and a half first. So I'm lining it up, six and a half. And whatever I cut off, like here, I'll save because that'll be for a different book. All right, now this... It's going to take me a couple of tries back and forth. And then it's still not ready to give, so I got to flip it over. And I'm flipping it this way. And then again at six and a half, and we're going to cut it from the other side. And again, back and forth a couple of times. And hopefully this will split. Nope. One more time. Six and a half. Eventually it is going to split. Let me just push it. There we go. The fact that this may be a little hairy, don't worry about it. I'll trim that up with my scissors. All right. Um, but now this, uh, we wanted it six and a half by nine. So we're going to do the same thing. Um, now, if you didn't have chipboard, what could you use? Uh, you could use cereal boxes. You could use the whiteboard from the designer paper. Um, you could use maybe a couple of sheets of um, cardstock like glued together. Cereal boxes might be the best. 
because they're already cardboardy. And you could glue those together too if it wasn't thick enough for your liking. All right, let's just rip this. All right, so we've got one. I'm gonna trim this up and um, cut the second sheet and then I'll come back. All right, so we've got our six and a half by nine inch chipboard pieces. And you can see these are going to fit. So the cover will fit like this and I'll have a border around these three sides. And then we'll punch our holes over here um, and then the pages stay nice. So now we wanna cover it. So generally speaking, when you're making, uh, when you're covering stuff like this with paper, um, so we want the size, you could just do it this way and fold everything in. I generally want an inch around each side. All right, so for the cover, let me get um, a red marker or whatever I can grab. So our chipboard was six and a half. So I want our cardstock covers to be an inch longer. So plus two, because I want an inch here, 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 here. So eight and a half by 11. Ugh. All right, scoring. We're gonna make two score marks to start out. All right, so we're gonna take each piece and we're gonna score this at one and then turn it and score it again at one. This is just to get us started. And let me get the other one. One. And one. All right, for placement, just so we get everything perfectly centered. All right, now, our card stock, I'm gonna flip this over. So, you know, I generally like to fold my paper down like when I score it and this is going in I like to fold it this way so I'm flipping it and I'm going to use this corner as a guide for where I'm placing my paper and I want to place it right up against there all right now I do want to put um, a little bit of tape down on the back side so I'm going to use a lot of um, tear and tape or score tape use whatever you have sticky strip if you want. Um, if you want to use a combination of tape and glue, I just wouldn't use only glue. I would use some kind of tape. And I'm going to go around all these corners. I mean, all these sides. All right, and then I'm going to put... Um, right across here all right and let me go ahead and tape up this one while we're at it so i made one little book uh, with chipboard covers out of uh treat bags like little gift bags and i used uh an entire roll of score tape building that album which i still want to make a video for to make like a folly one um but there just hasn't been enough time but it's still on my list oh okay i'm at the end here let's get rid of that one i got two others in here Burnish all this tape down. Burnish here. All right. So what I'm going to do is peel this tape up. Oh, if I can get it up. Here we go. It's going to say I might have to grab my stabby tool my poker. All right. Now I'm going to flip this over and place this again in this corner, lining up right at the edge of that score line over here and down here. All right. And again, 
Burnish, burnish, burnish. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over. Do the same thing. Now I don't need any more scoring. All right. So what I want to do is bend all these things up and you want to like go softly. You want to kind of train your paper that it's going to bend. If you go too quick or too hard, it may rip. So we just want to gently bend. Um, now this one went easier because that was the line I had scored. All right. We want to do the same thing over here. This one is the side that I did not score. So we're just bending it so it knows that it's gonna go that way. All right, and up, 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 up. Now we need our score, score tool, and this is where I like this one. So again, we're gonna come on each side, burnish this like straight up, and I'm gonna fold it over so it knows like you gotta show this cardstock who's boss. And I'm pressing down, but you know, firm but gently, because I don't wanna rip. All right, now again with this one, let's flip this paper up, and I wanna go with the flat side a couple of times right up against it, because this is catching the side of that chipboard. And you know, if you have thicker chipboard, it would be taller. All right, and then gently like fold over. Smooth it out. There we go. And then same thing with this one. Flat side. And I'm not gonna speed through this because I want you to see on every side, I'm doing the same thing and then I will do it again on the second cover because when I'm making little books, like this is the trickiest part for me. All right, this side, I feel like I've done this already, but let's just give it another one, can't hurt. Give it a fold over. All right, now we need to cut our corners. Um, they have a tool that you can measure, but I just like to clip it I like to leave about that much. Well, no, that's not true. Let's go a little bit less. So that looks like mm, maybe an eighth of an inch. Yeah. All right, and I'm gonna come in on the other side and actually I can do this at an angle. So see there, angle, angle. And again, I'm gonna go in. Just about an eighth of an inch. All right. Now we need more tape, more tape. So I'd like to run liquid glue right up against the side of that chipboard. Um, but then, and then I wanna do tape on this edge and then on the top edge, okay? So when you fold this over, this tape is gonna land like about here. So that's really good coverage. All right, and we're gonna do this around all four sides. So this edge, and then the very bottom edge that I hope is in frame. Yeah, I can't believe I almost messed up that math for the cover. It's an inch for every on both sides. All right, start with the edge of the chipboard. And then the edge of the cardstock. Now I'm using cardstock to cover it. You could use designer series paper if you wanted. That's generally thick enough. I would not use anything that's like one-sided only. 
because I don't think that would be thick enough. But anything that's double-sided should be good. You know, some, some pattern paper is thicker than others. All right, so we are good to go. Everything is mm, perfect. All right, now I like to start with the long sides, okay? So remember, we're going to come up and over. I'm going to peel this. I'm going to peel this. And then I'm going to take glue. And this time I'm using my art glitter glue. And I'm going to run this right along where the chipboard meets the cardstock. And that's just so it gives it an extra little oomph. All right. Now, when I flip this over, I'm going to start in the middle, press, press, and work my way out, okay? And I got glue on that, but that's okay. All right, now, before we get on these, um, the second sides, let me squeeze this. Now, we want to go back with our bone folder, press all over that, because remember, we had tape here and here. I'm going to get this off. It's going to bother me. All right. So we can do this one, and then we're going to come in and deal with these corners. So you see here, we've got that little overlap. We have to basically smash that down, smash it down here, and then do the side piece. But for now, let's do this one. And it's easier for me if I flip it. So we're going to peel, peel. And add our glue. Okay. And again, I'm going to start right in the middle. Pressing, flipping over and pressing, and then dragging it down and out to the sides. Nice, and then we'll take our bone folder and get all over that. Press it, press it, press it. Okay, mm, this is lurking perfect. Look at that, I love it. All right, now let's get these little corners and I'm just gonna take um, the corner of this bone folder and press it down from that direction. So these I got a little bit closer. There wasn't too much to press down these longer. All right, so pressing, actually, let me use this side. Pressing, pressing. And you'll notice if you cut them too close, your corners may peek out and too far, it makes it bulky. So there's gotta be a happy medium. All right, so I'm gonna peel this up if I can get that off of there. because it's stuck underneath. Mm -hmm. Let me see if this will help. Oops. Pulled my tape up. All right, let's do that. And this one. And then again, glue right down that seam. And I'm gonna go right to the edge too. Why not? All right, middle, press, 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 press. All right, now this, I really want to press these corners down. All right, and then get in here with the bone folder. Press all that down again. Okay. Now, I mean, look at that. That's a nice corner. Now, if it does hang over a little bit like that, like I could trim that, but I'm okay with leaving it. Do you see this tiny little bit that may be sticking up? Whoa. Here you can see it at a better angle. Let's go ahead and oh, I'm afraid I'm gonna wreck it, but all right, I got, I got it. But aren't those just perfect corners? Love it. All right, now let's do the same thing over here. 
and then we're going to do the second one. And again, I am going to go through that whole thing again, um, just because this is the scariest part. And I think it will do you well to reinforce it. And if you don't want to watch it again, you can skip through it, right? All right, let's get this going. Of course, I cut my fingernails the other day. Okay. Whew. All right, tape, tape now. Let's put glue right up in this seam, this edge. All right, and middle. I'm pulling it towards me. I think the last time I did do it from the side, it's whatever you're comfortable with. But you do want to start in the middle and then work your way out to the corners, no matter what, okay? Wipe that extra glue off, and then let's get back in here with the bone folder and really we'll smash that down. All right, and I can't believe how late it is. Okay, so there's our cover, one of them. Perfect, look at all the edges. Nice, nice, nothing ripped, nothing poking through. Um, we will then cut a piece that will fit over here and, and cover this up, all right? But let's go to our second cover and do the same thing. And I can't believe, I think I'm got a smudge on there. Ugh. Okay. Let me throw all these little bits away. Oh, and when I was trimming up my chipboard, I ended up with pieces this size left. And I thought, how cute would this be for a little mini book that you could put some of those tiny little pictures? You know, you can get... Um, like uh, the selfie or some little thing, it prints like two by three pictures. I think that would be interesting. So I'm definitely keeping these bits. All right, so back to this one. Um, we want to, remember this, I scored it down. So I want this paper to fold down. So I'm gonna flip it and I'm using this corner to line up this piece. All right, so right now let's give our tape another Press with the bone folder and then peel all these bits up. There we go. And then I'm going to line it up in this corner. So with that score mark and then on the side and then along the bottom, there we go. Press, press, press. Actually, I should probably use the rounded edge for this. All right. Good, good, good. Okay, now we're going to train our paper again. So we're holding it down on the table, firm grip on both sides, and then just gently, you know, rock it a little bit and bend that paper because you want those fibers to get trained, but gently so we don't rip anything, okay? And if you had thicker paper, some people like to use like a, a heavier weight paper, 110, 120, something like that. Um, you would just have to be more gentle, I think, with, with bending it. All right, now here, this one, same thing. So I'm just gently making this bend. And then the last side. Nice. All right, I'm gonna give this press up.
you can definitely tell the two lines that you scored to get you started. Those bend easier. I mean, because they're already there. Okay, now let's cut our corners off. So again, I'm leaving about that much room. It might be a little less than an eighth. And if you don't like like angling it, you could just go straight across. Actually, let me just try that. It just changes how your the insides will meet, but we're covering that anyway. So yeah, it's whatever you want. All right. Got those. Oops, that chipboard went flying. Now we add more tape. So again, we're going to add, get this started. We're going to go on the very edge of the chipboard here, all the way across. And then the bottom edge or the very edge of the cardstock. Okay. And then we'll just go around chipboard and then cardstock and chipboard and cardstock And I think I'm getting to the end of the line. Yep, with that one. One more, I have a partial. And chipboard. Very edge. And then cardstock. Okay. So starting on one of the long sides, we're going to peel our tape add our glue a bead of glue right at that seam I feel like I got a glue boogie in here okay and then we're going to start in the middle, pulling it up and over and press and then work our way down. Okay. To the edges and bone fold or get the bone folder out and really press this down. I feel like I did more bone folding with the other one. I hope you didn't hear my husband burp. He's downstairs waiting for me to be done so we can watch a movie, which probably isn't going to happen. Okay, more tape peeling up. And more glue. Let me lift this so I can see it. All right, so we are pressing up and over in the middle and then drag down and press as we work our way out to the edges. And that I definitely got a bunch of glue out. All right, and then we will bone fold, press, press, press. Mm, I like it. All right, now the side pieces. All right, peel. Peel. Glue. Oh, you know what? Ugh. Forgot to press these corner bits down. All right, because that is what really helps make that corner nice. All right. It's getting late. I'm 
At least we have everything ready for a service tomorrow. Let me turn this. So we've got the caterers, we've got um, drinks, we've got desserts, you know, for after. Um, cups, all that stuff. So we are set. Just have to get it in the car in the morning, drop it off at the church, go to the cemetery. So we're doing the cemetery thing, um, just the family. And then the church service will be for everyone. Okay. Nice. I feel like this one, um, I like the first one better. This one came together a little bit. Maybe I was too rough with that, uh, this thing, eraser, because I just scraped up some of the cardstock. Whoopsie. All right, let's bone fold this. And then let's get this tiny little bit. Yeah, there's hardly anything to, to smash over there on these corners. All right, peel, peel. Maybe this side, glue. Okay, now up and over from the middle and then press and work out to the sides. All right, and then, and then bone folder, smash it, just back and forth. Really give that a good flattening. Now these bits of glue, that's gonna dry clear, so that's not the end of the world. All right, but that too is a great looking cover. No rips, all corners are covered. Nice. Okay, let me cap my glue and let's talk about what our next steps are. Okay, so we've got our covers. So this will be in here. This will be back cover, front cover. Pages will be in here. All right. Zoop. And then our punch holes. So right now I want to cover the inside of the covers. All right. So this was six and a half by nine. And I want to make it. Um, mm -mm -mm. Six and a half by nine. I only want to take like a half an inch off. So let's go six by eight and a half. And this will be for the designer series paper. Okay. And let me write that down. DSP six by eight and a half. All right. And that is for the, to cover the insides of our page of our covers all right and i think i am going to use this piece because i like the stripes um i don't have any more this was rococo rose and i don't have any more of that paper so and i want the stripes to go this way so let's do six and a half by six by eight and a half so it'll be six this way eight and a half this way and since i need two of them i'm just going to cut this at eight and a half first Eight and a half, because that leaves me this piece to do something else with. And now turn, and this is 12 inches, so we'll cut it at six. All right. Now bring our cover back. Voila. I love it. All right, now we can use more score tape. Um, or we can just use glue at this point. For what this is, I'm going to use glue. And it's going to hold just fine. And if you know, if you wanted to use, sometimes the tape is quicker. 
Um, and I just want a little bit like in the middle, just because I don't like leaving the middle with no glue or tape. All right, get that off my finger. And then we will center this center-ish. All right, and then let's get our bone folder and really smash that out. And again, I'm just gonna wipe this glue that squidged out, wipe that off. Uh, that's gonna dry clear, so we're not gonna worry about that, okay? But I do like a lot of glue. All right, oh, I love this. I love it, you guys. Ugh. And I am gonna have to think of something for the front cover um, that may come tomorrow, but we're gonna get the, the book bound and everything tonight, and then I might go to sleep. All right, now same thing on the next cover. Let's add our glue. And then some more all over. All right, and then center this. That looks good. All right, and now let's go around. That one didn't have some the same amount of glue coming out. That's fine. All right, so next we want to cut holes, punch holes rather. Um, now I did bring in some of my beloved jumbo pewter eyelets um, and I think they may go, it may work, it may be too thick. Um, but I'm going to try it. But what I want to make is a template. All right, so. Oops. Papers are flying everywhere. All right, so I want to punch all my pages and this side. So I want this side of the pages to match butt up against this side of the book. I don't want the pages, you know, like this because that was... I don't want it right in the middle, always up to the edge, because that's how we designed it, right? No border on the left. Um, so what I'm going to start with is this piece was cut the same, five and a half by eight and a half. So I'm just going to go ahead and use it and mark with a pencil. Um, doot, doot, doot. I want these to be in a half an inch, so I'm going to make... Let's make a mark here, half inch, and here, half inch, just so I can hold my ruler up there, five and a half. And then I want to make a mark, um, do, do, do. Oh, you know what? I need my centering ruler. That's what I need. So zero, let's figure out how to get right in the middle. This was five and a half, so three quarters. Now I just eyeball, this is three quarters and this is three quarters. So this is the middle, all right, let me get that back. And yep, so three quarters, three quarters, zero, that's the middle. So I wanna go in, um, let's go in one inch. So this is three quarters, so I'm looking for the other three quarters, do, 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 which I cannot read. Oh, it's right here. All right, Bleep. right there, circle. So that'll be an inch in that way up top and then a half inch in there. Hmm, all right, three quarters, three quarters right here. 
And you could figure out where you want to punch your holes however you want. I just like it to be the same. And now that I'm looking at it, I don't want it that close. So I'm going to want to move this up a little bit. Let's go right here. Move it up like a quarter inch. All right. And then again, let's do three quarters and three quarters. And you know what? If I don't like that, um, I can repunch it. All right. So I'm going to bring in my crocodile that I can set to, I think that might be three quarters. One, I'm gonna have to see. So I want on the big hole punch. So this will do one eighth and three sixteenths. I need the three sixteenths. Yep, all right, now I'm trying to get this hole punched. So once you decide where you wanna punch your holes, all right, I'm gonna use this to set the spacing. All right, I want that to go there. Now, before I push it down, okay. That doesn't want to stay. All right, so I'm going to punch there and punch there. So, this is my template. All right, so I erased, this was a half inch in, and then I moved it. So the circles end up being three quarters of an inch in, so in three quarters of an inch, and then um, they were up one inch. So in one inch. All right, and let me do that in pen. So in one inch up three quarters of an inch and I just drop my pencil and then in one inch from this side because we want everything to be the same. All right, so now what we can do is um, grab my pencil again or I'll get a new one because I don't know where that one went. So I'm just going to mark these holes and I'm going to be able to punch at least three sheets at a time. All right. So I'm going to take my template, hold it up here, draw my circles. Hold these in place, hold these together. And I'm going to go in and let's see if you can see this way. So you can see where it's going to punch that circle. And then I'll come over here. And if they don't end up being perfectly the same, it's again, not the end of the world. All right, but these are good. So let's make a pile. And that was three at a time and that seemed to work okay. So I've got three more and these are double sheets. So line up the template, draw the circle. Tap, 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 punch the holes, punch the holes, okay, line those up, and they're still, they're going very nice. Now, you know what, I just realized, let's see, um, I really might need a bigger ring. No, actually, that might still be good. Okay, carry on. So more piles, three more pieces. Line them up. Circles, circles, all right? Now I will come back. Um, well, actually, I only have a couple more, so I'm going to fast forward through this.
Okay, so we've got all our holes punched in our pages. Um, now we need them in our um, covers also. All right, so this time I'm gonna go, I am doing a little bit of eyeballing um, because actually I could measure it. Uh, I just want this to be in the center. And so let's see this and I'm this time I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure blah, 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 the side of the cover to the side of this piece of paper so I'm just measuring that little bit that's a half inch and that's a half inch so we're good to go so I'm gonna draw on the inside now when I do the front cover I have to put the template this way all right so it cuts it in exactly the same spot all right, and again, we'll measure half inch, half inch, circle, circle. Okay, that is enough measuring. And now punch the hole. I'm going to punch it this way too, just because that looks a little ratty. Nice. I don't think I'm going to use the jumbo eyelets because um, I've tried them before in chipboard and I just don't think it's going to go nicely. So this will be fine. All right. And then we'll punch these. Again, I've got to tilt this a little so I can see. All right, and then I will punch again. So you see what I mean? The back side of where you punch, sometimes it gets a little ratty. So I'm just gonna punch through on this side and that will clean that up. And if you have a tip for how to avoid that, uh, please let me know. All right. Because this is what I've been doing for years, is just repunch the back side of it to make it nice. All right. Now let's get this out. So all our pages, our cover, our cover, everything should line up. Did I do the right covers? Oh, yep. All right. So now let's take our rings and we're just going to. Um, start finding these. Ugh, actually, I mean, it would be nice if I could go through all of them at once, right? All right, let's do the cover. And then let's try to get all the pages through. Okay, oops. There we go. And then our back cover. There we go, and pinch this. Okay, that's gonna work. I'm gonna want this um, this part to be like around the back, but mm, okay, that's nice. So I only went with two rings. Obviously, you could go with three if you want, or four, whatever you want, it's up to you. I thought two would be it. All right, and then we'll fish that through. Oh. You guys, all right, now let's see if this is going to bend nice. And it is not, so I do need to find my bigger rings because it's not going to, see how the book, since I punched it so far in, it doesn't want to um, move. So that's, that's okay. I've got bigger rings, I'm just gonna go find them. All right, but the next thing that I'm gonna do is I've got to, do a little decorating, like a little, you know, I want some, probably use some of that hydrangea paper and then maybe stamp a hydrangea. And I know I wanted to stamp this. The world is better because of you. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have our book. 
All right, so I'm not going to, um, I'll come back with the finished product because it's just going to be a layer here, really. Maybe some Highland Heather cardstock and the designer paper and, and something. Um, all right, so we'll come back. Okay, it is after midnight. Um, I've got to get this done. So I've got my binder, my book together. I ended up having to use these two inch rings. Uh, yep, two inch. I really needed one and a half, but I don't have it. The other ones I have are all one inch and then these giant ones, two inches. So it's gonna have to do for tomorrow. And then I'm gonna um, get one and a half inches and replace it. But I tied three different kinds of ribbon on it. I like doing this on the ring bound or the these O-ring albums. I usually, you know, add a bunch of ribbon. So that makes that nice. Um, then I add this layer for the top. So this measures the Highland Heather part, seven by four and a half. All right, and then I cut down a quarter inch. So the DSP is four and a quarter by six and three quarters. Um, then I took a doily, glued that on, and it is off-white, not white, but that's okay. Um, then I stamped the hydrangea, colored it in. I mean, it's a two-stepper, so stamped the uh, outline and then added the leaves and the inside of the hydrangea. Die cut that. Die cut two of these celebrates and glued them together and then pounced that all with Winkostella. Pounced this all with Winkostella. Um, stamped this and cut it out. This is a die from uh, the seasonal labels dies. And then this one was, I think, Celebrate You or Amazing You or something from a long time ago. And then added a couple of the pastel pearls. Now, all I'm going to do is glue this straight down. I'm not popping anything up. I'm kind of leery though of adding those pearls because, um, well, actually, that's not going to matter because people aren't going to be writing on it. Usually, if I'm making something that I know is going to get writing, like a journal or something, I don't want to have a lot of lumpy stuff behind an area where they may have to be writing. All right, I have to stand up now to make sure I get this. There we go. Oops, and let me see. What is this thing? Oh, low power, low battery power mode. All right, so I hope that was still recording all that. Um, so I've got this glued down, and I hope it's straight because messing with my camera all right so there we have it our six and a half by nine yep six and a half by nine album or guest book really um, I feel like that's a little crooked but that's that's too late so this will open like this and they'll just have to mess with these rings to get them to open um, I'm gonna have to figure that out maybe we'll have it like this and they can, you know, sign, flip the pages, etc. So, yep, enjoy this. I hope you enjoy this book. Uh, you could certainly do this as a mini scrapbook, not a guest book or a, you know, a registry book, whatever. Um, but there's ideas for you. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.